Well, we're in chapter 36 of Jeremiah, and it's quite an interesting chapter also. Uh, remember that we're not in chronological order, so uh, here's what happens. The Lord comes to Jeremiah, and he says, I want you to write down everything that I've told you from the time of Josiah, which was about 641, uh, to the present time, and he's already dated this uh, particular chapter as the fourth year of Jehoiakim, K-I-M, uh, which means 36 years worth of God's words to Jeremiah. <laughs> now I know that he must have been thrilled. So he dictates these 36 years of God's warning to the nation of Judah and to Jerusalem. And he, he has Barak write them out and uh, they take them to some officials and the officials read it. They're alarmed by it. They decide they better report it to the king. So they tell Jeremiah and Barak to hide and uh, the scrolls that were written of 36 years of warnings to Judah uh, for their unfaithfulness and their iniquity and the punishment that could come uh, it is, is all read uh, to the king and the king doesn't like it at all. He throws it in the fire. Uh, so God says to write it again. You can imagine 36 years of history burned up and now they got to write it again. So they write it again and get it to the king again. And uh, lo and behold, the king wants to take and uh, kill uh, Barak and, and uh, Jeremiah. Uh, but God hides them. God hides them, and uh, they're not able to kill them. And you say, how do you apply that to our lives today? Well, it's pretty easy to me. How many times has God told you to stop doing something or to start doing something? And how many times have you just discarded it? How long will he be patient? God is patient, he's loving, and he's kind, but he's also a God of judgment. And there's coming a day of reconciliation when either you'll reconcile to him or you'll be reconciled to your fate. So if you're watching this and you've never trusted in Jesus as Savior and you think it's just a bunch of hooey and uh, falsehoods, I want to warn you, God's not going to be patient forever. And yet he loves you and he wants you to accept his son Jesus who died for your sins and my sins on the cross of Calvary so that we might have eternal life. Jeremiah has a lot of chapters and it's the same thing over and over and over again. Warnings, warnings, warnings. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like those warnings we get on the TV about the weather. Uh, we were warned uh, back a month or so ago about a hurricane that was coming up through the center of the United States. And we had no idea that it would ever cause us any significant problem. But we had over 70 mile an hour winds and perhaps some twisters which skipped across our mountain and took down trees that were uh, 80 feet tall huge in diameter. I couldn't even reach around them. Big oak trees with massive root systems. You see, I ignored the warnings. There wasn't a lot that I could have done about the warnings, but I ignored the warnings. I didn't even put up some of our lawn furniture and some of the things that were outside, and they blew all over the place, including my canoe, which was thrown against a metal post and poked a hole through it. Well, that's minor compared to spending an eternity in a place called hell. So, my friends, whether it's just punishment because you've been ignoring some of his do's and don'ts, or whether it's eternal separation because you've been rejecting Jesus, it's time for you to think about how many times God has warned us and take action. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you. Have a great day.